to find that they are now cast as adventurers in the heroic mode. But attention, inevitably, focuses on the overall winner. The man with the message is Duncan Lee. 792 points, United States of America. The warmth of the reception is revealing. It means more than a souvenir snapshot. Congratulations then to Tim Hensley of Portland, Oregon and Michael Hussey of Middlesbury, Vermont. The first American team to win the Camel Trophy. Eighteen nations formed this year's convoy, with South Africa present for the first time. Spirits were high, as this year's competitors worked together to dig each other out of the mud. From El Dorado, the team would head west, out of the thick jungle and across the wet swamplands of Paraguay, back into Argentina, for day after day of driving on the dry Chaco plains, over the Andes and into the Atacama Desert, and the finish on the Pacific coast of Chile. 18 days, three countries, and 2,500 kilometers. Let's pick up the action. Right. The tracks the far side were as waterlogged as the piranha. Only the fish were missing. The locals call this the road to hell, except hell is cooler than central Paraguay. With every meter, the mud got wetter. Puddles became ponds, ponds became lakes. The road became a sea of mud. If it was the last thing they did, the teams were there to get through the mire. The sight of cattle on the road made the task seem easier, but cows and gauchos are about the only things that dare tackle the road to hell. For five months of the year, no wheeled vehicles even venture near the place. It didn't take the teams long to work out why. The road to hell turned from bumpy to a wet roller coaster ride. The discoveries bucked and kicked like the local cattle. Their drivers held on like the gauchos for dear life. Below the surface of the water, deep ruts sank up to three feet deep. The front of the discoveries disappeared underwater like boats in a storm. Some holes got too deep even for the discoveries. With eternal optimism, the teams got out of the vehicles and got stuck into digging the ruts out of the road. In three hours, the convoy only crept forward 300 meters. Yeah, certainly the start of the convoy this morning, we were expecting a bit of trouble. This is the first major obstacle, a lot of mud, soft sand, water, long hole through us over here now. If, uh, no, none, none of the convoys through yet, we've got to prepare the road. It's going to be a difficult one, but we'll get through. The spirit is very good, the guys are ready, they're working hard, digging hard. As you can see, they've already done a lot of work digging and preparing the road. And the guys are enjoying it thoroughly. <gasps> This is not nice. The convoy split into work groups, getting one vehicle through each obstacle at a time. Those up front had to deal with virgin mud. Those behind had to deal with the holes made bigger by the cars ahead. At one point, the convoy stretched out for 10 miles. From 18 separate units, the convoy gelled into one team of workers. The sun baked the mud hard onto their skin and clothes and made the bodywork of the discoveries hot enough to cook on. Still relatively fresh after only four days on the road, the teams were fighting fit and insanely keen to overcome the sea of mud and water. The mud had been a backbreaker. Now the challenge was the Chaco, the endless prairies in Argentina's far northwest. The convoy made good time across the Chaco, traveling the farthest distance in one day since the 1992 Camel Trophy. At the end of the 18-hour day, the convoy fought through bushes long and sharp enough to rip a tire, just to find a campsite on the banks of the River Pasaje.
For a week, the sole objective of the Camel Trophy was to cross the Andes, stopping only for two days to build a mountain research center near Peogaste. Climbing thousands of meters a day, the convoy snaked into South America's wildest mountains. With every meter climbed, the air got thinner and cooler, the engines hotter and wearier. A week ago, the route was bogged with mud. Now there wasn't water enough to keep much alive. Only cacti and prickly grasses survived this high. Because we've been uh, climbing so high, the vehicles have been working extra hard and consequently they're overheating. And with the advice is run the heaters on, although it's still very hot here, keep the heaters on, the windows open and uh, take it steady with the vehicles. And watch the temperature gauge. I've never seen anything like this before. Uh, mountaineering is my hobby and I spend a lot of time in the mountains, but this is just absolutely amazing. And the best is yet to come. I mean, we're still climbing higher and higher. I'm wondering when the road is going to end. We're still going up and up. It's great. It's a world on top of the world, a place where only the toughest survive and where the brave dare tread, perfect for camel trophy. Between the Andes and the ocean is the Atacama, the world's driest desert. For hundreds of miles, there's no vegetation, just sand and rock. It took two days to come down off the mountains into Atacama. Every meter closer to the sea, the air warmed up and the oxygen got thicker. In the heart of the desert, the heat was fierce and the dust heavy. At the back of the convoy, the teams were driving blind in a fog of bulldust, so thick that the Canary Islanders almost drove off the edge of a cliff. In teams of six discoveries, the drivers headed for their invisible coordinates in the desert. A marshal in one of the cars was meant to observe the navigation challenge and tell the teams when they had found the right spots. The groups crisscrossed the Atacama all day, driving up and down dunes, trying to find a way across gullies, just to get the elusive map coordinates. One group took three hours to find the first point, going round and round the same dune to find a way to the top. Anyone taking a shortcut ended up stuck in a gully or up to the axles in soft sand. Not all teams agreed on how to navigate. The Swiss, who were still leading after El Dorado, had a big falling out. The Italians also. Only one group managed to get all their GPS points in the right order. The Canary Islanders even got stuck in a hole and waved their group away, thinking that they could get out on their own. But this task was not about driving fast. The idea was about working as a unit. Even for the best teams, finding the coordinates was not easy. The last 50 kilometers of the two and a half thousand across South America looked more like a desert caravan than the world's toughest four-wheel drive adventure. There was no avoiding the bull dust this time on the final sweep through the Atacama, down onto the beach of Juanitos. For the first time in three weeks, the Camel Trophy could go no further. Well, it was great coming through to the final uh, end line. Uh, it was a fantastic feeling having to achieve the, the, the objectives of the Camel Trophy now. But uh, yeah, all good things must come to an end. 
and it happens too quickly, but uh, it's been a fantastic experience and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it from start to finish. No regrets whatsoever, and uh, the experiences I obtained were, uh, you know, indescribable. It's really fantastic. Victory this year went to Spain. Congratulations. Central America, home of the ancient Maya, Belize, Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador and Honduras. Through five nations over three weeks, covering 2,000 kilometers. 20 teams volunteered to endure Camel Trophy Mundo Maya 95. This year, the mud and water literally swamped the vehicles as competitors towed and dug each other's Land Rover discoveries out of the mud. David de Kaiser continues. The convoy is heading for the frontier between Belize and Mexico, the second of the five nations on the mammoth circumnavigation of the Mayan world. Never before has Camel Trophy crossed so many borders. Only one track leads out of the jungle. If it had rained, the mud would have been impassable. If there had been mud, Camel Trophy Mundo Maya might have spent two weeks on the same track. Small pits of black mud sent a few wheels spinning, but the train kept on rolling. By nightfall, the teams have an appointment with Lake Petanitsa, last stronghold of the Maya. On the banks of the lake, the teams make the best camp of the expedition. Normally, on Camel Trophy, the convoy runs as a whole, often up to three kilometers long, each car looking out for the next. In Guatemala, that all changes. Spread out like pathfinders discovering a new land, the teams unfurl Guatemala for themselves. 750 kilometers separate the Peten and the Guatemalan border with El Salvador, where the convoy has plans to regroup. 750 kilometers in two days sleep is kept short. Up over the mountains of Western Guatemala, where some of the world's best coffee is grown, the team see the country, warts and all. At the river Ostua, where Guatemala and El Salvador meet, the team safely came together again. The Belgians had come close to crashing, but everyone else was safe. The dream of a final week waist deep in mud looked to becoming true. But the reality of life on the road was a little more down to earth. A herd of cattle brought the convoy to a standstill. The rain swelled the rivers on the border between El Salvador, Guatemala and Honduras, turning stream into torrent. Under the surface, huge boulders littered the riverbed. One wrong turn and a discovery could be left floundering in midstream. One at a time, following precisely in each other's wheel tracks, the convoy inched its way across the river. A railway bridge marks the border between Honduras and Guatemala. Its wooden deck is broken and is only a few inches wider than the vehicles. The bridge is an impressive structure, but nothing compared with the rock roadway the Spanish explorer Cortez built through Central America. The convoy is the first motorized expedition to follow Cortez's route from Honduras into Guatemala. The locals take bets that it won't succeed. Gangs of team members gnaw away at the undergrowth and the deep ruts on Spanish road, gradually clearing away along the historic trail. It takes an hour to edge forward one kilometer. Every hole has to be filled, every dead tree moved clear. The goal is to be free of the jungle by dusk. The team step up a gear. 